you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you if you wish. You've just been read your Miranda rights. Chances are those words are familiar to you from movies and TV programs. On the screen, the reading of Miranda rights typically means that the suspect has been caught and is headed to jail. In the criminal justice system, though, those words mean so much more. Miranda rights are an acknowledgement that the Constitution guarantees certain protections to all of us and that law enforcement officers have an obligation to honor those protections and inform us of our rights. It's important to remember those values on Law Day, a day set aside across the nation to talk about the rule of law and how it applies equally to all, regardless of a person's race or religion, regardless of whether one is rich or poor. This year, Law Day celebrates the 50th anniversary of Miranda v. Arizona, the landmark U.S. Supreme Court case that spawned the reading of Miranda rights. The case involved a man named Ernesto Miranda, who was taken into police custody and interrogated for two hours without an attorney before he confessed to serious crimes. Mr. Miranda was found guilty, and he appealed all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. The High Court ruled that his confession couldn't be considered as evidence because law enforcement didn't inform Mr. Miranda of his rights before they started to interrogate him. As a result, the court ordered a new trial. The result for Mr. Miranda was the same. A jury once again found him guilty, but the court's decision forever changed our system of criminal justice. Five decades later, law enforcement officers now routinely read Miranda warnings to suspects. That simple act is part of an ongoing effort to ensure that our criminal justice system is truly just and fair. Courts across the nation try to live up to that standard each day. In New Jersey, we're on the verge of some of the most substantial changes to the criminal justice system in decades. Starting January 1, 2017, we'll implement bail reform and a new Speedy Trial Act that will make for a better and fairer system of justice. Under the current system, defendants accused of a crime can be kept in jail until their trial if they're unable to make bail. Many poor defendants accused of nonviolent crimes who are not a flight risk sit in jail for long periods simply because they don't have access to enough money to post bail. While in jail, awaiting a trial that will determine if they are innocent or guilty, defendants may lose their jobs and may lose access to family members. At the same time, defendants charged with violent crimes who pose a danger to the community or a risk of flight can be released from jail until trial simply because they do have access to money and can post bail. There's a better way. Starting next January, instead of relying on money bail, judges will set conditions for a defendant's release before trial based on the risk of danger the person poses and the risk he or she might not return to court. Pretrial services officers will monitor those conditions before a trial starts or the case is resolved. The new system will also set limits on how long someone accused of a crime can be kept in jail before the trial must begin. Just like Miranda writes, these changes are based on protections the Constitution guarantees. Under our system of law, we have the right to a speedy and public trial, the right to be considered innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, and the right to equal treatment under the law, regardless of how much money we have access to. I challenge all of you to continue this conversation about the criminal justice system. By doing so, we honor one of our nation's fundamental principles, to strive for liberty and justice for all. Thank you for making time to participate in Law Day today.